We are Quilters HQ, Windmill Sewing Center, and Sewing Machines Express. You should ask him. He probably knows. Well, and know. the people oh. searching for our mobile laptop table. <laughs> That's who we are. <laughs> and the people searching for our mobile laptop table. And I think I'm going to use this. So you need some charm squares, a big block. This one is more than, I'm going to use the um, 18 by 18 ruler once I'm done here and trim this down. So I don't know if we'll get to quilt all of it, but I had this concept of like piecing and quilting at the same time. And I know it's been done. I've seen it, you know, from other other people where they've done it. And so I printed out, this is a cutwork block. It's one quarter of it. So I could get a very large kind of block and um, have wide spaces in here. And you'll see why in a little bit. And I used the 505 spray to um, make my sandwich. And I think I'm sewing on the right side. I hope so. There is a right and wrong side to batting, and I didn't think about that when I started drawing. And it's not my lucky day, but we're still going to do it anyway. <laughs> so I'm sewing on the wrong side. But I'm going to be sewing with a gold thread um, glide, and we're going to sew on the Q20. And this is one of my favorite colors for quilting. This is called Cleopatra. Um, it's kind of this gold color. The quilt behind me is actually quilted in it. It works with just about everything. If you really want to highlight the quilting, which we're going to have some fun with it. And so, and I'm also using from Clover, the Choco Liner pen to um, outline this um, design. And these things are so easy to use. You just kind of go back and forth. And there's a little wheel inside of this that you can use to, to draw your line. Give us a thumbs up if you've used these. And if you have, give a review. And so it just makes a little chalk outline. And we don't need it to be perfect because we're just using it for a guide for this. And since it is just chalk, it will just brush off, wash out with no trouble later. And you can see what a good outline I'm getting just by using this. And it here, let me just come up here and where it's not going to be and you just kind of go back and forth I don't know if you can see it it's just a little tiny metal pinwheel and the chuck falls through when you're using them these are $10.99 they come in white pink and blue and you can buy refills for it and how much are they $10.99. If you want one, comment, make it mine. I think when you see this project, you're going to want one. I have high hopes. Hey, Donna, how are you? I think we'll do this one next. And so I started drawing it, and so we're just going to finish tracing this out. And like I said, it doesn't, this is a very impressionist kind of. If you wanted perfection for this project, you would use needle turn. But we're doing this modern style. So modern quilting is any kind of new application to a older style of quilting. And applique is, is of course, very, very, very old. How old? I don't know. But um, you know, you see portraits of kings and queens with clothing that has applique on them, so at least a couple hundred years. Okay. 
Hey, Donna. Hello, Cheyenne. How are you? Hi, Donna and Cheyenne. Hopefully you had a good fourth. Yeah. We went out and watched the fireworks um, near, what is it, Olathe Northwest. Okay, and that's going to line up pretty well. So not bad for only cutting out a quarter of the pattern. Hi, Peggy. How are you? So once I get this traced, and like I said, I'm not being perfect with it. You don't have to be. Just use your inspiration. Make your curves curvy, and your straight lines don't have to be straight. But you could really do this with anything. So like if you had any kind of silhouette, like a Northwood silhouette or trees or a flag, you could do that with this as well. So someone asked, can you get the pattern? Um, the pattern, can we get the, uh, can we get the pattern? is um, one I just downloaded from the internet. I just did a um, search for applique quilt block pattern. Hi Sarah, how are you tonight? And this is one of the ones that Google gave me. You don't want one that's super, super complicated. Think back to when you were in grade school and you were doing all of those silhouettes. Happy anniversary, Donna. Oh, happy anniversary. We are doing well tonight. Okay. So someone said, uh, that sometimes they've had trouble with the pins, like the marks disappearing. So I don't know if that's a color thing or a background. Um, I, you know, they make those um, disappearing ink ones. This is chalk, so this is gonna stay there pretty well. And we're gonna sew over it, so I'm not really worried about it making a mess. And I'm going to use this really vivid, since this kind of has a Hawaiian theme, so you can see where I brushed over the chalk and doesn't really disappear. So I'm going to use this Jungle Paradise and basically the concept, and we're going to go over to the Q20 here in a minute. I'm going to pull out the white ones because I don't really want those. So we're just going to kind of lay these out. And if you want to have like really cool tips on your applique, you could lay it out like that. And so we're going to kind of, we have the impression of where this is. And so there's going to be a lot of, um, you know, kind of picking up and peeking under here so that you can see your design. If you're not that good at it, like, so if we put this one here, you can use your taco liner pencil and just carry that design through. Just like that. And we're actually gonna quilt hey, and piece and we're gonna try and cover this whole thing with all of these really vibrant colors. So we've got pinks and teals and orange. And this is gonna, I think, give us that really good Hawaiian feel. So I'm going to take my scissors, all well, of my pieces. What's the name of the dish? Name of the dish? Loco Moco? Oh yeah. I was telling Robert about, I, I used to live in Hawaii when I was in the Marine Corps. And they have this dish, it's on rice, and it's a hamburger patty with <clears throat> brown gravy, and sometimes they throw other stuff in there too, but then they have a fried egg on top and they call it loco moco. Pretty really not good for you. <laughs> but That's all high proteins, right? Like most things that are not really good for you, it tastes delicious. <laughs> are, are you gonna pull this? <laughs> mm -hmm. I just moved it over the this is a little bit too high for me. I'm going to lower this just a little. Just a little. And so... That was not malicious. I guess just where it landed. Okay. So, um, 
Hey Amber, how are you? If you've ever thought about a long arm, this I think I might have signed you up for the uh, surgery event, so. It's a delight to sew on. I always, always, always cheat when I thread my machines and pull it through, but let me wind a bobbin first. <laughs> well, Patsy, that might be worth to live by. She said, new diet. If it tastes good, spit it out. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ruth was asking uh, about a two and a half inch blocks. Yes, these okay. these are um, mini charms. And then, so is the sandwich white? It is kind of a white Bat background. Batting and white fabric. Yep. Okay. Are you out of bobbin? Well, I kind of wanted my bobbin to match. Yeah, oh, gotcha. Oh, yeah. And when I'm using Glide, I have found with this machine, I do kind of have to hang on to it just a little bit because it tends to pop out of the tension disc when I'm winding a bobbin. And that's why I'm doing this. If I was using cotton, it wouldn't even be an issue or a consideration. Almost done. There's my bobbin. Let's just pull our thread through. I'm sure Bernina technicians are cringing everywhere. And let's see how it goes. I have high hopes. I'm hopeful. Doesn't take too long. Bernina does claim the only. Uh, needle threader on a long arm on the market Good one. it does work pretty well a little bit harder to do with nylon thread though or polyester there we go. so what do you think we should do about the show next week Joan well we are going to be at Bernina University, University. Trade out our bobbin because I don't really want bright orange. <laughs> I like Cleopatra much better. Now, when I load a bobbin in a long arm, and I tell everybody when we when we um, set up long arms, don't use the little lever. Make sure it's not push it in till you hear it snap because if you don't it will shoot out like a rocket when because I hardly ever remember to close the door and I have been on my knees in the store crawling around looking for that bobbin so I'm just gonna come over here I'm gonna do a needle down needle up and to do that on this machine all you gotta do is kick backwards on the pedal to bring my bobbin thread up Turn the, yeah, you want to turn the, the lights a little bit? Um, I can. Settings. Is it the eyeballs? Nope. Nope, not that one. Back to settings. Nope, that's the display. There you go. How about that? That's Better? Good. Yeah, you can see the lines now. Okay. Can I just turn it off? How about now? Yeah, even better. Anybody even better? See that? So I am going to put a little kind of yellow one here on right here. Let me get out of this because I can't sew when I'm in maintenance. Go home. And then I am actually going to go to BSR2. And so we are stitch regulated here. And don't worry if you happen to like make a mistake or anything. So I'm going to sew all the way off. So I've made my little curve here. And then I'm going to sew back over. And then just tack this down. 
and then just kind of sew out of the way a little bit. And I'm just following this quilting pattern, this quilting line. I'm going to trim these threads. I should have brought a waste basket with me. And then I'm also going to trim this. And we are just going to leave this raw edge applique. And you can see I kind of missed my mark a little bit here. Doesn't matter. And so then we're going to go, we're going to put one, I'm going to sew backwards a little bit. And those red lights that you see, those are the, um, oh, thank you, Robert. Those are the um, stitch regulator. So even though this is a um, sit down or stand up. Hey, Teresa. It comes all the way back here. Right to there and then comes up like this. Yeah, uh, you could do this on a, on a just a straight line machine too. Right? Absolutely, you could do this on a straight line machine. And so I'm going to come over here. I'm going to catch this little bit right here. Come up like this. And I'm not glue basting or anything here. And then I'm just going to quilt this down. Anything that stays on the quilt gets quilted down. And it does not have to be perfect. Because we don't live in a perfect world. And we're just going to trim this back. Creativity is so important. Creativity dispels negativity. That's a good one. I found it in a fortune cookie. <laughs> okay. Now we have to give credit to a cookie. Yep, Somewhere. fortune cookie. So I'm just going to add this little piece of blue. I think my point is right here. So I'm just going to kind of follow the impression of that line and join them up. Maybe right there. Yeah, this is, uh, Ruth was saying what a great way to use, use some of your scraps. Absolutely. So, so the hardest part, I think, in doing this this way is going to be, um, you know, getting the outline. But once you do, I mean, you could do this all day long. Super easy. And just sew along the edge and tack that down. How many bolts of fabric are you hoping to carry? <laughs> right, Why don't you is, answer that, Robert? This is a running topic here. So my goal still is the 10,000. And so with my next piece, so see how I'm not putting these on straight. I'm angling this and I can probably get a little bit more of that in there. And I'm just covering up some of this, but it's gonna have kind of a really choppy look. And I'm just gonna copy this line onto here. And then after I get done with this, we'll go back and trim this piece. Maybe a little bit further. There we go. And anything you make like this is going to be uniquely yours. Because it doesn't matter what colors you use. Same people could be using the same fabrics in a classroom and yours would still be absolutely yours. I should be using <laughs> Well, you know, it's a goal to shoot for. The fabric reps thought it was awesome goal. <laughs> I can imagine that. 
I've never seen Kobe so happy. <laughs> hey, Michigan gal, how are you tonight? Okay, I'm gonna throw another yellow one here. Kind of offset it a little bit. And so we're just kind of working our way around this. And see how I just carried that, that line of my applique block over. And so I'm going to come back, I'm going to sew back up my line. So just to recap where you stepped in, she did a chakra outline, basically of a quarter of a piece of a pattern she downloaded from the internet, which she thought would be cool to just draw on a food sandwich. Took a charm pack, just sew some different colors on there. Yep. And just kind of play around with color. She had a Hawaiian kind of yeah. in mind tonight, so. And you can see this shape coming together, and it's going to have this really cool kind of patchwork look to it. And so I'm going to fit this next one right here. And you're quilting on top of some of the fabrics. But if you've got, I mean, any little bitty scrap of fabric would work. You don't have to use these squares. So I'm just going to draw my little point line here. Hey, Bernadine, how are you? It's a little more curvy in than that. Curvy in. I just made that word up. And so when I'm traveling across these, I really don't want to quilt on top of this. So, because I kind of want my back to have this kind of funky quilt block pattern on the back where it's just kind of square-ish. And we can stop here in a second and I'll show you what the back's going to look like. But survey time, what does everybody think of this kind of a project? Has anyone tried doing a project like this? It reminds me a little bit of the... Um, uh, what's that method where they're fusing all of the pieces down? They have an outline and they're fusing pieces down and sewing a cat or a sewing machine. Okay. And so we need a different one. It's a project. <laughs> it's, a, I like it. <laughs> it's a project. That's right. So again, I'm just going to trace this outline. I think this is called a fleur-de-lis, I think. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea, Ruth. Yeah, batiks would be kind of a cool look for it as well. Yep. Collage quilting. Collage quilting. There you go. Reverse applique. Okay, so here's the bigger question. Who's going to try it? Kathy said it's a rainy day project and they need some rain up there. Well, you know. Send you some rain. We could do some rain, actually, too. We could use some rain for sure. It is hot here. It's real hot. Uh, so Sarah, she got in a little bit late. What, what did you draw uh, the pattern on? So this is just um, kind of some white fabric and some scrap batting. So um, I think this is just a little bit more than a half of yard. And then I cut it and I use the 505 spray to fuse um, to, to stabilize my project with the batting. And um, 
So did you take the 505 spray and you sprayed it all over? The batting. The batting. And then okay. just press your fabric down and it kind of stabilizes it. So let's... Um, no heat or heat? No heat. You don't okay. need heat for the 505 spray. And so we're going to put another piece. Ooh, I like this and one. Then you just took a, she just took a charm pack and she's just sewing on different colors. Yep. These are mini charms. And then outline it. And so I'm going to kind of, not with that, with this, kind of follow this line. And I may not be able to see this one. Yeah, I can kind of see it. So then you're just tracing that line back through so you can see it to quilt it. Right. You're and welcome. you could use a friction pin as well. But you could absolutely do this on your domestic. Just because I'm doing it on here doesn't mean that you have to have a long arm. I do encourage you to have a long arm. They're a lot of fun. Um, and then you just repeat this process as you go. And then the back kind of has this weird kind of, I don't know, what does that look? Can you see it very well? Not very well yet. Let me do a little bit more and then we can come back and look at the, the back of it. And even like some of these bigger pieces like this, you could just take them and, you know, come back later and just randomly put it in a spot and quilt over it too. So if you wanted to add a little more color to a certain section or something or change what you did, just throw another piece on there that you like and Absolutely. just quilt over the top of it. Absolutely. And so I'm just trying to maximize my pieces here, my little scrappy pieces. I'm going to draw this and that. And this goes this way. And then this goes right there and right there. So what does everybody think so far? I'm, I'm kind of digging this. Yeah, it's uh, pretty cool. these little parts. I should have used, I should have grabbed some apple case scissors. But I'm playing with fire here. There we go. And so then I'm going to sew my way back around kind of following those lines. You don't have to. You could sew right through the middle if you wanted to. And then I'm going to use, this is perfect. And I don't even think I'm going to trace that one. I'm just going to follow that line. up here. Let's put this little piece right here. This little tiny scrap. Because we like to take advantage of all of our scraps, right? Yep, you gotta use it all. And that was a fairly large piece, so how about... Ooh, there's a frog. Let's make sure the frog gets in there. And I think I can actually get, not quite, 
pretty close. Not quite. Well, I don't know why that one works and the other one didn't. Let's call it that. So it's kind of like you're giving the impression of the block. So you can see why this does not have to be perfect. Got that one covered. I'm going to sew down here and then trim. You could do all this trimming afterwards, but I kind of like to trim as I go. You can probably see it a little better if you trim as you go, right? Yeah. Kind of see the outlines. Of, well, you might want to make a change too. Yeah, you want to add another little piece of fabric here or something. Yep. How many blocks are you going to make? Is this... I think I'm just going to do one as a wall quilt. But you could use a method for um, joining these together. Um, once I get this pieced, all of these little scraps of fabric laid down. And you can see I kind of missed my chuckle line here. Doesn't matter. You're just doing the impression. And, you know, once this gets washed and nobody, who's going to know? right so let's see if we can see the back now <laughs> so Peggy was saying when you when you trim as you go then you get really excited because you can yeah. see what you're making right so, you can see your progress yeah. and it's kind of cool so I'm kind of going around in a circle I think I'm just going to put one big one right here But it kind of does have that Hawaiian Island flair, doesn't it? The, with these colors. Very bright. Yep, and if you wanted to do your piecing and use like um, decorative stitches on your machine, you totally could. Um, that would work too. Another piece to trim. And that would look kind of cool too if you went around yeah. the edges of the kind of stitch. Yeah. And so the rule of thumb for batting is you want to quilt at least a hand's every hand's distance. So even if I do nothing else except take this over, put it on my serger before I bind it, this is enough quilting for this project. So let's add some teal. Karen said she's too much of a perfectionist. She might not be able to make it perfect. <laughs> well, that's the whole point. This is this is impressionist quilting. That's what I'm going to call it. Impressionist quilting. Or if somebody else can think up a better name for it. Through the eye of the artist. There you go. And that's what modern quilting is, is like you take something that is has been around a while and you just use a new method to do it. for another piece. I think we can fit that frog right there. Yep, there he goes. He's found his home. Mary was saying uh, could make it look like a crazy quilt. It will look kind of crazy when it's done. But it's just something different. So different from your normal, um, you know, 
cut piece or use that quilt cut piece um because sometimes that can get kind of boring I need to come out a little bit more you know you get tired of doing the same old thing well this is something different oh there's a headless leopard we'll, oh no <laughs> we'll include him too we'll put him right here very organized <laughs> and if you know being too organized with your um, projects because I talked to an, another uh, customer today she's traveling up from Texas um, visiting I think it's her daughter and she was talking about oh, that'll be perfect right there she was talking about how um, they were doing a project and she could not, she couldn't, she couldn't make herself make these crazy lines because it was kind of like this, except it was like long strips of fabric and you had to sew like crazy lines over it. And she was telling me that she really struggled. So I'm going to cut this in half. So I'm just going to follow my line around here and I'm going to cut a lot of this one off and then use it again. And unfortunately, we're not gonna get through the whole thing, but we'll get through a lot of it. And then, oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. Look, there's a crazy little piece with a little monkey. Can everybody see the monkey? Yep to go right there. Let's see, make it fit where I won't cut his head off. And I want that to go under. And I am going kind of slow because I like my fingers. And then I'm going to sew around we got maybe time for one or two more pieces and then we're going to do our giveaway and um yeah janice we have a store in springfield it's in the kikapoo corners just off of campbell and again here's a big piece i'm going to cut a lot of it off i am going to trace my line here If I do it left-handed, it'll work a little better. And then back out. Okay. here let's trim all this stuff off and see what it looks like and then I'm gonna pull it out I'm gonna leave this here and work on it maybe tomorrow afternoon you're welcome we do have a giveaway tonight we do And I'm going to get to it in just a second. Let me bring my thread up and cut it. Let's take a look at where you're kind of at so far and see what this looks like. Yep, I'm going to take it out from underneath the machine. But you can kind of see, you can get the impression, the back is cool. 
Yeah, so I think that was a thing. Somebody was saying, you know, what about the back with the different lines on there? And do you really, you know, would you want that? I kind of like it. Mm -hmm. What does everybody think? Let's see if we can get really close where you can see. It looks like um, not um, stained glass. But it kind of gives that impression of like oh, that, yeah. pieced. Huh. So what does everybody think? Well, hope everybody had a really enjoyable Fourth of July holiday, and be safe out be there. Be safe out there. If you have any leftover fireworks, you got to shoot them off soon because I heard sirens going yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> They're looking for you. <laughs> everybody have a great week.